All right, everybody, welcome. Appreciate you guys all uh, joining me on a Monday afternoon. We're, we'll get through this and uh, get moving on with what's going on for the rest of the week. All right, so just so you guys are aware, this, is, this uh, lesson is being recorded for learning purposes. And uh, just virtual expectations real quick here. Uh, one, make sure you're following along with the Nearpod. If uh, for some reason you can't get in the Nearpod, if you just answer the things in the chat, that'll work too. Uh, next thing, make sure you're using the chat tools respectfully and appropriately. Um, this class, there's not very many controversial things, so uh, just about money, right, in the economy. <laughs> uh, the last one is respond to questions and instructions the first time helps us to get a flow through it. Okay, this is gonna be our lesson objective. Before I jump into that, what I wanna do here is uh, come down here and uh, look at what we need to do in the class. So as you log into the class, the class announcements will be right here. Uh, I mean, the recordings. So if you missed a class, you can always just come in and you know hit play. You're good to go that way. If we look at the class plan, uh, live classes are Monday, so this week we have modules 9 and 10 that we need to do. Uh, next week is 11 and 12, and then we have 13, 14, 15, okay? Uh, last day of the block is the 18th, so everything needs to be turned in by that point. So you have a good week and a half, or even more than that, to kind of get everything in and get all caught up if you need to. All right, looking at module nine. Just want to take the time. Okay, so talking about saving and investing, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about that. The, the biggest one that we're going to kind of go over today is um, understanding the role of risk and asset protection. And so really that has to do with insurance. I have some... Um, good examples for you, I guess, as we kind of go through the lesson here. Because let me tell you, you don't want to be um, without insurance when you need it. Okay, so the lesson objective today is given quizzes in the OLS, students will accurately answer multiple cho choice questions about investing and risk management with 80% accuracy across one trial. So, um, We'll start to get in it into it. So insurance and risk management and kind of what that means. So what we're going to be doing. So risk management is basically exchanging for a relative small payment, which uh, the insurance company calls a premium. You protect yourself against a bigger loss or setback. OK, and I have some examples of those as we kind of get going through here. But before we do, uh, this will give us a brief overview of what it is all about. So let's listen to this and then we'll discuss. Hi, I'm Becca. Today we will discuss the purposes of insurance and risk management and discuss insurance needs at different stages of life. Life is full of risks. You can try to avoid them or reduce their likelihood and consequences, but you cannot eliminate them. You can, however, pay someone to share them. That is the idea behind insurance. There are speculative risks, that is, risks that offer a chance of loss or gain, such as developing a killer app that may or may not sell, or investing in a corporate stock that may or may not provide good returns. Such risks can be avoided simply by not participating, they are almost always uninsurable. There are pure risks, which are accidental or unintentional events, such as a car accident or an illness. Pure risks are insurable because their probabilities can be calculated precisely enough for the risk to be quantified, which simply means it can be priced, bought, and sold. Risk shifting is the process of selling risk to someone who then assumes the risk and its consequences. Why would someone buy your risk? Because in large enough market, your risk can be diversified, which minimizes its cost. Insurance can be purchased for your property, your home, your health, your employment, and your life. 
In each case, you weigh the cost of consequence of a risk that may never actually happen against the cost of insuring against it. Deciding what and how to insure is really a process of deciding what the cost of loss would be and how willing you are to pay to get rid of those risks. Unlike insuring property and health, life insurance can combine two financial planning functions, which are shifting risk and saving to build wealth. The decision to buy life insurance involves thinking about your choices for both and your opportunity cost in doing so. Life insurance is about insuring your earnings, even after your death. You can create earnings during your lifetime by selling labor or capital. Your death precludes your selling labor or earning income from your salary or wages. But if you have assets, they can also earn income. They may be able to generate some or even enough income to ensure the continued comfort for your dependents, even without your salary or wages. In other words, the larger your accumulated asset base, the greater its earnings and the less dependent you are on your own labor for financial support. In that case, you will need less income, protection, and less life insurance. Besides the idea of life insurance, which another way to protect your beneficiaries is to accumulate a large enough asset base with a large enough earning potential. If you can afford the life insurance premiums, then the money that you will pay in premiums is currently part of your budget surplus and is being saved somehow. If it is currently contributing to your children's education savings or to your retirement plan, you will have to weigh the value of protecting current income against ensuring your children's education or your future income in retirement. Or that surplus could be used toward generating that larger asset base. These are tough decisions to weigh because life is risky. If you never have an accident or illness and simply go through life earning plenty and paying off your mortgage, saving for retirement, and educating your children, then all of those insurance premiums just wasted? No. Since your financial strategy includes accumulating assets and earning income to satisfy your needs now or in the future, you need to protect those assets and income, at least by shifting the risk of losing them, through a chance of accident. At the same time, you must make risk-shifting decisions in the context of your other financial goals and decisions. All right, so that was a lot of detail right there, but it was really good to kind of understand. So one of the best things that they kind of talked about or best examples they talked about is a basically insurance okay in regards to maybe like an automobile accident so let's talk about that right now so one of the other classes i teach here is driver's education so if you're looking at your license some point in time you got to take driver's ed so you could take the theory class through me here uh and it's just a block class but this is one thing that i pulled from the insurance okay so one of the things we talk about is the number of insurance claims for blank accidents involving teens is blank higher than for those blank crashes rates dropped by blank six months after their blank. Okay. So let's see that. Uh, the number of insurance claims for what accident, what kind of accidents do you think? I'm going to put it in the chat there or you can do it on the screen. Hopefully you're thinking automobile accidents. Okay. Cause that's what you're going to be driving. Okay. An automobile accident involve uh involving teens is what higher how much higher a hundred percent higher okay so it'll be a hundred percent higher than those for adults okay that's a lot right so you got that's why they have what's called the graduated uh, license laws where you go and get your permit. That's the first thing you need to do before you even take driver's ed. You need to go get your permit. Okay. So, uh, 40 or sorry, um, get your permit. Well, after you get your license, after you take driver's ed, you do all that stuff, you get your license, you still have to wait six months. Okay. And this is the reason why, because of the statistics. And then it'll say teen crash crash rates drop by 40% six months after their, they obtain their license. Okay. That's why you can't, after you get your license, there's a six month waiting period 
where you can only drive um, immediate family or yourself in the car. Okay. There you go. I'm all correct. Okay. All right. So being a teenager here, because you're in this class, right? Maybe some of you have the uh, your driver's license already. Maybe some of you don't, but here's something to think about. Uh, could you af afford to pay for the damages you caused in a car wreck? So if you were to go and hit another car, we're just saying another car. Could you, could you there, share your thoughts. What do you think? Okay, some people are putting in the chat, no. Absolutely not. So, I mean, just little tiny. So, hear this. Like, it. Um, I help out another school with their behind-the-wheel training, right? And so, we had to replace just a mirror, a side mirror. That was it. I think that was three or four hundred bucks just for the side mirror. And it was just the cover too. It wasn't even the whole mirror. It was whew, not, but things get a lot, lot more expensive. So somebody said maybe, but if you didn't, what would happen, right? The, the driver could come back and sue you if you were in the thing, right? They could sue you. They could take everything you have. And because the liability right now falls upon your parents, they could start digging into what your parents have right okay so you want to minimize this risk here's um a whole bunch of different insurances you can get we've been talking specifically about automobile insurance right now okay so i said my mom would kill me yep i probably would let me tell you another little bit about automobile insurance well not automobiles but vehicle insurance so i was in um i should have put pictures that would have been fun uh, so I was in Lake Powell this summer and we're cruising around on the boat and, uh, my kids were surfing off the back and I was helping them and stuff. My brother-in-law was driving and we're coming around, just going around and next thing you know, poof, freaking hit the bottom of the lake. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't want to know how much it costs. It costs a ton of money. Like. A lot, a lot of money, right? I mean, we're talking over $10,000, okay, <laughs> that it cost to fix. But luckily, I had insurance, okay, that covered that, okay? So I took it down to the shop. I said, I'm going to run this through insurance. I called my insurance company. They got me the um, how much it cost minus my deductible. So that was my, the amount that I, I paid for it. And, uh, you know, boats now fixed, right? Wasn't a fun situation, but I could basically have a boat out there that I couldn't afford to pay to fix. And it's worthless to me now, right? I couldn't even sell it to get money out of it. So you got to kind of do there. Another sad situation, let's talk about health real quick. So this lady that I um, I go to the gym with, um, she was training for a triathlon and actually got hit by a car. And uh, unfortunately, she went into, uh, she uh, went to the hospital, um, is still there right now. This happened about two weeks ago. And problem is she doesn't have health insurance. Yeah, the vehicle that hit her, okay, vehicle that hit her will pay out a certain amount of money until it exhausts the policy. But after that, then it goes on kind of in her hands. Yeah, she can go back and sue the people, right? The automobile, the driver, but it's, it's, it's not very good, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it was a hit and run, but it's it's just a sad situation, right? And so now she's worried about, you know, the family's worried about medical bills, that kind of stuff. 
Okay, the next one's life insurance. Okay, life insurance. Um, this is something I have personally. I have quite a few kids, my wife that depends on me to bring in income, that kind of stuff. So I have enough life insurance to pay off our house to provide probably, you know, five, six years or even more until my kids get out of the house uh, that my wife could live without having to bring in any income. Okay. So life insurance, homeowners and renters, right? One of our most valuable assets is our home. And so if our home were to burn down and we didn't have insurance on it, you're out of house, right? Um, little bit of money that you have to pay. I know sometimes it, it stinks. Like I pay a lot for some of my insurance, but it's worth to minimize the risk, right? I don't have to worry about it. Other ones, disability. Um, this one's kind of interesting too, because if I couldn't work, what, what would I do? So we got to think about all of that kind of stuff to minimize your risk and be able to be okay. So insurance protects against large scale losses, financial losses. We talked about there some, there are some examples there. Um, there's something called what's called the insurance premium. So you pay that insurance premium to the insurance company and they have a whole bunch of people that pay these premiums, right? So they have this whole bunch amount of money. So then they have enough money and what they actually do with that money is they invest it and they have really smart people that invest it. And so they make more money. So then they can basically pay out on these kind of claims and stuff. Okay. Um, most people pay their insurance like monthly, you know, monthly car insurance, sometimes quarterly, semi-annually or annually. Uh, deductible. So like in my example of my boat being hit, oh, it still makes me sick thinking about it. Um, I had to pay a deductible. So my deductible on my boat I had to pay was $250. So uh, the insurance company gave me fixed everything up on my boat except $250 worth. And that was my portion that I had to do. What that does is it um, really basically deters me from wanting to file a claim all the time. Because when you file a claim, you'd have to pay that deductible, right? Plus your insurance premiums go up over the long term. Okay. No, $250 isn't bad, but it's still not the greatest. Okay. So there's different types of insurances we talked about. Uh, first one's automobile insurance, which you guys are going to probably need fairly soon if you haven't, if you're not driving yet. Okay. First one's liability coverage. This means that anybody that you hit, so if you were to cause bodily injury to somebody, or if you were to cause property damage to somebody, it would be covered under your liability portion. The other one's medical payments that are paid out. So if you're in a car, um, the first thing is, is what's called your personal injury protection, your PIP. That's paid out to everybody that's in the car. Um, if you were to get in an accident and then it would go to whoever's liable for it. You have uninsured and underinsured motorists. So uninsured motorists, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that don't think insurance is important. And if they don't have insurance, oh, you may be out of luck, right? Because if they're not paying for their insurance, they probably can't afford to pay for anything else, right? Um, the other one is underinsured motorists, which means they don't have enough insurance to cover, to fix your thing. Some people just take, do the minimum, um, coverage for insurance. So for example, um, I think the minimum property damage coverage you have to cover is like $15,000. Well, I don't even think you can buy a new car out there worth $15,000, right? $15,000 doesn't go a long way. Yeah, you are legally required to cut to um, carry automobile insurance if you have a, or the automobile has to so the insurance follows the vehicle so if you're driving a vehicle it has to be insured right it's a requirement but not everybody does that unfortunately um there's a lot of things that that go into the things and so we talked about that that once you first get an uh, auto insurance policy, it's going to be super expensive because you are very young and inexperienced. And so uh, you're probably going to want to get beat a beater car <laughs> with just liability coverage on it. 
Uh, but all of these things, they can say, hey, we can track to say that, hey, it, you're more less likely to get in an accident because of these certain things. Health insurance. Okay. Um, this has changed a little bit. It actually, you can stay on your parents' policy till, till um, 26 years old now. Um, but basically, you want to have health insurance. We kind of talked about that situation before. Uh, not good. You never know when your health is going to decline. So make sure you are covered and you have that. Property insurance. It is to protect your material possessions in case of a by fire, flood, or theft. Um, homeowners and renters insurance. So if somebody were to steal something, that would be claimed if I were to have a fire on my house or uh, I haven't really filed any claims on my my homeowners before, but like big, huge windstorms kind of cause a lot of damage to like shingles or something like that. So that's something that would do uh, life insurance. So anytime someone else is else depends on your income, you want to probably have a life insurance. Um, so I have quite a bit of I said life insurance before to pay for um, all the way up until my kids are are grown and can start working themselves. So, and then also other future needs that you might need. You might look at disability insurance, other liability insurance. Um, more more like income you make and stuff like that, the more likely you are to get sued. Unfortunately, um, so that's just the way of life. You just got to protect yourself against all of those types of things. The last thing you're probably going to need to look at is uh, when you are going to kick the bucket, I guess, uh, estate planning. Okay. So depending on what you have, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of fights that go on in families due to basically what people get and what people don't get. Um, so have a smooth transaction to minimize the government from taking over because in states that the government could actually take over if things are not planned out correctly. Um, and we, you don't want that to happen. Right. So have some type of a state plan to, to help you there. And here's some state planning. So wills, trusts, joint ownership of assets. Um, so I have all these, I have a trust for my family. I have um, a will that basically says what, who distributes what, who, who takes my kids if both my wife and I were to pass away, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, just things you got to think about applying for life events. But if you do have any questions, let me know uh, what you need to do this week is module 10, which is right here. So you just have two quizzes in module 10 and then also module uh, nine, which is right here, there's quite a few, one, two, three, four, just four quizzes, okay? So not too bad. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question, said somebody that, uh, yeah, if a family member murders because of insurance, yeah, yeah, that would not be a good thing. But then they're going to get put in prison for the rest of their lives, right? Not good at all. So, okay, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll stick around if you have any, but I'm going to stop the recording here. So thanks, guys.